the ripples pooples hello everyone and welcome to saturn slam review of clash of champions 2017 a show that is best described as something that happened yeah uh just it i wouldn't say it capped off the year as much as it sort of like was present at the end of it it's like yeah. a fade out in a dj song you know <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't really add anything to the production, but it's it's there. Um this yeah, this show uh it had a lot of things that just I didn't care about, I think is the best way to put it. Um mm -hmm. and the crowd in Boston seemed to feel the same way about much of this show as I did cuz they were heatless for a lot of it. Um yeah, kind of like the story of the matches, uh, the story of the night is the match would start, no one would care, and then when they got to, when they went to go home, people would start getting into it because of the near falls, um, except with the exception of a couple matches, which we'll we'll we'll, we'll talk about them all, but uh, that specifically we'll get to. All right, so pre-show match, Mojo Rawley versus Zack Ryder. Did you watch this? I did see it. And it was, I don't know, I found it thoroughly okay. All right, I did not see this. I was busy uh, doing something. I don't remember what. Probably making dinner. It uh, was a tiny, it was a tiny match. You can see on the time on the card, it was like seven minutes. Right. And it just sort of, like, what even is this as a pre-show match? I'm assuming Mojo went over in fairly convincing fashion. Yeah. I mean... Pretty much. Sounds about right. Um, <laughs> so, with that out of the way, we kicked off the night with the triple threat match for the United States Championship. Dolph Ziggler versus Baron Corbin versus Bobby Roode. Um, once again, for the United States Championship, this match was like... The best way to describe this match is it's a better version of Dolph Ziggler and Bobby Roode's match from whatever the last SmackDown pay-per-view was, or whenever, whichever SmackDown pay-per-view they wrestled les on, but interjected with bits of Baron Corbin that just kind of killed everything about this match. Baron bits. Just sprinkle it onto the salad that was this Baron match. bits. If, you're, if your food is too exciting, <laughs> sprinkle these Baron bits over it. <laughs> It'll cool it right down. Um, yeah, Baron Corbin had, like, the worst heat segment in the history of heat segments. Like, I thought Jinder Mahal, when he was getting heat, was boring tonight. It had nothing on Baron Corbin. Like, this match ground to a halt whenever he was on offense. The man is a stone. <laughs> Not in a good way. So, every now and then... They'd uh, they'd throw Baron Corbin to the outside, and they'd actually you know have a decent wrestling match, and then Baron Corbin would come back in, and it would get worse, and <laughs> the cycle repeated itself. Um, they did the Tower of Doom spot, uh, which they do in every multi man match, which is only a problem because WWE does multi man matches literally every single show, and they all do this Tower of Doom spot. Can we get a Tower of Doom at some point into a super kick? I think that's, that, the, that's the next that, level there. That's the next level, but I'm thinking about how I would try to do that, and it ends with a broken leg. <laughs> Whoever's doing the super <laughs> kick every time. <laughs> that or a concussion for the person taking it. Uh, um, well, what so, a joy to see them try. Yeah. So uh, the finish of this match was Baron Corbin was going to hit an end of days on Bobby Roode, and then uh, out of nowhere, uh, Dolph Ziggler hit a zigzag when Baron Corbin was in the middle of his finish and won. So your, your new United States champion is Dolph Ziggler, which kills any, any prestige that Belt may or may not have had. Um... You can argue it was already dead when they gave it to Baron Corbin. But oh my, what a lineage of the United States title. <laughs> it went from. Let's review. This year it went from uh, Kevin Owens to AJ Styles to Baron Corbin to Dolph Ziggler. 
<laughs> and to compound matters, they did like a fake retire. I don't know if it was a fake retirement or not, but Dolph Ziggler like left the U.S. title in the ring on SmackDown and just walked away. So I don't know if the belt's vacated. If it is, this this makes this so much worse <laughs> than it already was. I don't care, except I actually do. Yeah. Um, Dolph Ziggler, king of the mid-card. He's had like 10 title reigns between the U.S. and Intercontinental Championship. Um, but, uh, yeah, so... Uh, this match was pretty boring until the end, where it got okay. Uh, I'd say it it clawed its way to a two and three quarter star rating. Mm-hmm. Two and a half. Yeah, uh, Bob Roode was a baby face here. Yeah, uh, the crowd was super into Roode. So, like, from a work perspective, there were no baby faces in this match. I was trying to figure out, like, within the confines of the match, who the baby face was. I determined there weren't any. And it was all people who can heal. Uh, But the crowd was super into Bobby Roode. Uh, They really wanted to see him win. They went crazy for his near falls. Uh, When he hit the glorious DDT on uh, Ziggler, the place went really alive. And then Baron Corbin came in and sprinkled his Baron bits on everything and cooled it right down. As he is wont to do. Um, We had this... Segment with uh, Daniel Bryan complaining about the size of his referee shirt for later in the night. Yes. Um, Shane came up and they admitted they had no idea what the hell they were going to do with his two ref stipulation. Oh, um, it's great. And they they just had a little, I guess you would call it an argument. Uh, it was not good. Um. One of the interview girls they had tracked down Baron Corbin. He was crying about losing his title and vowed to get it back. Ooh, joy! I can't wait for, <laughs> I can't wait for the renewal of that classic Baron Corbin Dolph Ziggler feud from a couple years ago or a year ago, I guess. Oh man, that was a thing. <laughs> yes, and it was awful, and it would not end. <laughs> Can we get a uh, Miz? Ziggler, Baron Corbin. <laughs> the battle of never-ending feuds. Just yes. have them feud for two straight years. And then um, put them in a tag team. So this led to the fatal four-way match for the SmackDown... I almost called them the World Tag Team Champions. No, the SmackDown Tag Team Championship. Uh, between Rusev and Aiden English, the Usos, Benjamin and Gable in the New Day. Uh, Rusev was the most over man in America on this show. <laughs> crowd was going nuts for him. They, they opened with uh, Aiden English and Rusev in the ring. Aiden began to sing the 12 Days of Rusev, which uh, was fantastic. I especially enjoyed the part about, what was it, Nine Lana's Leaping or something like that? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Kurt, um, what are you going to do for Rusev Day? Beat up John Cena! <laughs> Oh, we were on the same wavelength the exact same time with that. Well, when you put that out there, I'm like, you put it out there, I'm like, you know, he set me up for the beat up John Cena. I'm going for this, whether or not he expected it. But, but we no. were we were in sync on that one. Um, the crowd's going nuts for the 12 days of Rusev, uh, but they obviously were expecting Aiden English to be booed for this. Because uh, when he, he asked if they wanted an encore and the crowd resoundingly approved, uh, they cut him off with uh, American Alpha 2.0 making their entrance. Uh, <laughs> I just find it funny. When Sheldon Benjamin was in the company the first time, he was on the smaller side of guys because everyone was so huge back then. But now, because the average size of wrestler has, has shrunk, he's a giant. <laughs> This man is He's become massive. Become the bigger man. Yeah. Um. New Day just threw pancakes on everyone. Uh, yeah. Including one child in the front row who was uh, none too pleased about this. He was like, "I want to say hi- high fives and stuff," and they're like, "Nah, some pancake." Just threw pancakes on top of this young man. Um. No syrup either. Well, that's probably Which, a good thing. Yeah. 
But I gotta say, that'd be a sticky situation. Oh, weird entrance gimmick. <laughs> I'll just say. <laughs> yeah, the Usos came out and they did their own rendition of, I guess you'd call it, the Twelve Days of Usos, <laughs> which they were yeah, all they... Usos. That was that was the the shtick. Um, and then Nine the match locked in. <laughs> Lack. That's a meme if I ever seen one. The Usos have become just living memes. Um, ever since the Hall Pass promo on uh, Talking Smack. <laughs> Remember when that show was was good and must see television every week? Yup. Then um, Daniel Bryan left. Yeah. Where they took him off, it would probably be more accurate. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, so this the format for this match was just stupid. Um, traditionally, in a fatal four-way tag team match, two guys start in the ring, and anyone can tag in anyone on the outside. Uh, this was not the case in this match. It was a fatal four-way, essentially, um, where you could only tag in your own partner. Which, you know, kudos for trying something different, but it sucked. Because it broke down to a point in the middle where it was just two people doing rest holds simultaneously. <laughs> and it was not compelling television. They honestly, it, honestly, this should have just been a fucking four way tornado match with all eight guys in the ring at the same time. Because essentially that's what it was for over half the match. Mm -hmm. um, so they should have just done that from the start. Uh, it was boring until, you know, the finish. False finishes toward the end. Uh, Rusev got Biggie in the accolade, and the place, like the camera, was shaking. The place was going so nuts for this finish. They thought Rusev and English were going to win. They really wanted Rusev and English to win, and honestly, they probably should have just called the audible and let them win it. But had to stick with the plan. Um, there was Chad Gable ran wild, hitting a Chaos Theory on Biggie. I'm, I'm gonna say that again. Chad Gable hit a O'Connor roll German suplex on Big E. Once more for clarity, 5'8", 200 pound Chad Gable hit a rolling German suplex on 5'11", 320 pound Big E. Fucking muscles, man. It was and damn impressive. Um, everyone hit their finishers. The Usos went on a crazy super kick party where they just... Super kicked everyone who was standing on two legs uh, in the immediate ringside area. They hit the splash and got the pin to retain the titles. Uh, it was a slow-ish start, but it really got good at the end. I gave it three and a half stars. Uh, three stars for me. Um, it's good, but just the ending was nice. The rest of it, I don't think, yeah. could make it up for me. I was, I guess, I was just gobsmacked by that chaos theory. <laughs> Chad Cable snapped off because he did it on. I don't know who he did it on first, but he did it on a smaller guy first, and then he went to do it on Biggie. I'm like, there's no fucking way he's doing this, and then he did it <laughs> with the greatest of ease. All right, then we had Charlotte versus Natalia in a lumberjack match. Uh, lumberjack matches, almost as a rule, always suck, and this one was no exception. Because they had six of the seven lumberjacks, six of them were heels. <laughs> Naomi was the lone baby-faced lumberjack, and she didn't get involved hardly at all. Uh, so whenever Natalia would throw Charlotte out, and this was like half the match, Natalia would throw Charlotte out, the heels would mug her, they'd roll her back in, rinse and repeat, um, until Naomi finally decided, oh yes, maybe I should help my good friend. And did a dive on top of all of them. And in the chaos, uh, Carmella teased cashing in money in the bank. But the Riot Squad stopped her for reasons that have yet to be adequately explained to me. Um, and it broke down. Charlotte did a moonsault onto a pile of like seven girls. It missed all of them. <laughs> Landed on her feet. But they sold anyway. And <laughs> the whole Gotta thing looked them. ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, and then just out of, uh, very quickly, uh, Charlotte reverses whatever Natalia was going for, puts her in a figure eight, and, uh, wins her, to retain her title. Uh, yeah. they did a post-match interview with Natty. 
she rants and raves about how everyone turned their back on her and then she was going to turn her back on them. Now, this this seemed like a promo someone would cut if they were turning heel. But correct me if I'm wrong. She's already a heel, isn't she? Yes. Yes, so that would be correct. Points for how, Kurt. I don't know what the fuck this was meant to be. Uh, I thought maybe retirement, but nope. She was she was on SmackDown, still complaining about shit. I don't, fuck, Athlete. I don't know. Jules, maybe. Yeah. So I I just realized as we we're doing this, like in the booth, in the studio, right now. I just realized why we have so many multi man matches going on this time. Do I tell. think my theory is that they had to make up the hours for everyone for their contracts. Just like we need to get this many more minutes in for your match times, so get in the lumberjack match. It's cool. I've never seen a WWE contract, so I can't speak to their exact nature. But my understanding is that the downside guarantee does not uh, come with it a guarantee of minutes of screen time. It's just how much you get paid, regardless of whether or not you get booked. But, you know, good on them for being charitable and trying to book everyone on every show, uh, despite the ill consequences they're in. Um, Dasha goes to interview Jinder. She's met with the Singh brothers, who's big, who teased the big angle for the show. Will they be there <laughs> at the end of the match? <laughs> Keep that in mind. Because the payoff was oh so great. <laughs> oh. So then we had Brizongo versus the Bludgeon Brothers. Tyler Breeze, for whatever reason, decided to switch to short trunks uh, for this match. It was not a good look. He should never do it again. Up your uh, game. Come on. Bludgeon Brothers come out, uh, and they uh, beat them handily. This was exactly yeah. what it needed to be to get the Bludgeon Brothers over. I'm sure they're being groomed for the a match with the Usos at some point down the line, possibly even WrestleMania. Um, and then maybe if they call Authors of Pain up to SmackDown, uh, that that's probably their first program, uh, teaming with big other big people. <laughs> then we had Kevin Owens. Oh, sorry. So uh, no, the uh, Charlotte Natty match I gave a star and a half. Uh, it was just really boring. Uh, yep. No cash in, which I don't know what they're waiting for with that briefcase. Obviously, they have some plan for it, but uh, you know, if you normally if you make them wait this long, you tease the cash in more often. So when it happens, it's a big deal, and people remember it. Yeah, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't. So. I'm interested to see if Carmella is going to be in this Women's Royal Rumble they're doing. Because uh, she's got the briefcase, so it would be kind of awkward if she also like won the Women's Royal Rumble. <laughs> I got two shots. That would be... Oh, that would be interesting, though. If she had two shots, like she loses the first time and she just immediately cashes in. Yeah, they teased that deal with uh, Seth Rollins uh, He in 2015. Uh, he uh, he was in a triple threat with Lesnar and Cena at the Royal Rumble. And he was like, I'm going to win that title, whether it's plan A or plan B. But uh, hmm. he did not win the title via plan A or plan B. But he would cash in at WrestleMania and save save that show. It was pretty, pretty badass, actually. One of the best Money in the Bank uh, runs ever, I feel. Uh, so, uh, Brizongo... Versus Bludgeon Brothers, I gave a star. It was a squash match. I'm I'm deciding whether to give it four stars or zero stars <laughs> because I I'm gonna say zero stars because it was it was nothing. You know that's how I, that's my policy. If it's just a not a match, I'll give it zero stars. But I also want to give it four stars because it's exactly what it needed to be. It fulfilled its perfect perfectly. You could say it's a near perfect match. Yeah. <laughs> It's a perfect four zeros. Let's get. I'll give it four zero stars. Okay. <laughs> um. So, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn faced 
Randy Orton and Shinsuke Nakamura with two special guest referees, Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon. Um, This match was like nothing, which I should never have to say for a match containing these four wrestlers. Right? (sighs) In ring, they just kind of did stuff. The story was the refereeing. In the beginning, they, they were not on the same page at all. They started doing the counts at the same time, but they were out of sync, so it was really confusing to understand. It's almost like having two refs is a terrible idea. Yeah. <laughs> almost. Uh, they eventually came to the same accord that siblings do in the back seat of a car during a long road trip. This is my side. This is your side. We don't go on each other's sides. Uh that lasted for all of five minutes because they were counting falls on each other's sides. Uh, there was a point in this match where uh, Shinsuke had, I think, Kevin Owens in a triangle. And uh, Brian starts counting his shoulders down. And Shane's like, what are you doing? It's a triangle. And Brian's like, his shoulders were down, which they clearly were. Shane McMahon, not very good referee. Um, so the big payoff to this... Uh, and this was a this was great for the story they've been telling. This was a great angle. The match was shit though. Um, so Sammy rolls up. Um, I want to say Randy Orton, and Shane counts one. He counts two. The uh, it's clearly a three count, but he doesn't count the third fall. He just stands there, and Brian's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" And it was on Brian's side of the ring too. Um, and then a little bit of time passes. Shane gets knocked down. Um, Sammy makes a quick cover, and Shane fa- or Brian fast counts one, two, three. Now I think he's supposed to be the heel in this situation, but he was a hundred percent justified in his actions. Yeah, eye for an eye. Give him back. Like th- they had the match won, and he just <laughs> corrected the action here. So I don't know who. Who's the baby face or who's the heel in the situation? Um, if you go by the crowd reaction, they were definitely on the side of Zayn. This is so weird. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are supposed to be the heels, yet they are the wronged baby faces. They are Daniel Bryan in 2013. <laughs> <laughs> Channeling him. <laughs> yet they're supposed to be the heels, and we're supposed to side with the vindictive authority figure that is Shane McMahon. This angle's weird. And it's gotta be, like, Daniel Bryan's gotta be wrestling Shane in WrestleMania, right? Like, that's the only payoff to this. I, I, we can only hope. Or, or they could just do, do another them as dual special referees again. Because I could see that total anti-climax happening. Just, ah, fucking, they, to do this again. So they did it with The Miz, and they never paid that off. Which was very annoying. And now they're doing it again with Shane McMahon. So if they don't pay it off this time, you know, if I'm Daniel Bryan, I don't care if they let me wrestle again. I'm fucking walking when my contract is up in September. Uh, but, you know, that's that's probably like if they're going to let him wrestle and, you know, there's some rumblings that, that it's not impossible now because um, they, they fear him leaving and going to like new japan to help them with their u.s expansion um they might you know just give up the ghost and let him wrestle fingers crossed hopefully (laughs) um but yeah this this match was 21 minutes of a concept that should have gone no longer than 10 (laughs) yeah this is not feature worthy a star in three quarters. And I thought this was going to main event, honestly. I was surprised when this came out second to last. Yeah, this was two. But uh, mm. for for the first time in a while, the WWE Championship headlined a SmackDown pay-per-view. <laughs> Imagine that. Uh, AJ Styles fought against Jinder Mahal with the Singh brothers. After that whole big angle, are we going to show up? They just walked out with him like nothing ever happened. And they it, they barely interfered also. So, like, what was even the point? Like, yeah. It, why they not? didn't even commit all the way. They weren't either way. They're just like, we'll interfere a little bit. Yeah. So, like, 
in a in a very obvious way that was the ref saw. I was like, is that, shouldn't that be a DQ? If the ref's seeing it usually when they do these things, like the ref is distracted. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, he looked on. right at this and didn't DQ. <laughs> and <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't, I I used to think I knew what constituted a DQ in wrestling. Not anymore. <laughs> My whole world has been turned upside down. Apparently, you can lose a match while you're in the ropes if it's no DQ. And apparently, it's not a DQ if you attack or are attacked by someone <laughs> committing outside interference. The whole 2017 turned the whole world topsy turvy. Um, so we had we had this match. Uh, it was probably the best Jinder Mahal match of all time, and it had the greatest spot in the history of professional wrestling ever. So there's a spot in this match where Jinder's on offense, and he's he's building to a spot, and he's chopping his hand he's chopping his hand he's chopping he's chopping he's like i'm gonna get this bastard and he leaps up high in the air and delivers a karate chop to aj but it's not your garden variety karate chop oh no 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 no, no. he chops his head and it was like aj's head was made of like super ball material because he <laughs> chopped it and it bounced back at five times the rate of speed at which it came in <laughs> And this happened twice in this match. <laughs> Everyone should go back and watch this match purely for the Jinder Mahal chop. If he turned this into his finish, Jinder Mahal could be WWE champion for 80 years, for all I care. <laughs> uh, for uh, but other than the chop, this match was a. Uh, oh, well, this was probably the best Jinder Mahal match of the year, possibly ever. And definitely the worst AJ Styles match of the year. They came and they met in the middle. They met in the middle for sure. Um, AJ sold and sold and sold for a long time. Jinder is not very good, so the heat was not super entertaining. Um, and uh, just kind of boiled down to... Um, well, AJ worked the leg a little bit. That came into the finish. Uh, his ribs were damaged. <laughs> Jinder Mahal goes so gassed by the end of this match. <laughs> he can, when AJ hit the springboard 450, he could barely kick out, and he was lying on the mat just gasping for air desperately. <laughs> oh. Um, oh, Jinder. But AJ, AJ got him the calf crusher, and uh, Jinder looked like he was going to try to do the Brock Lesnar grab his head and pound him until he lets go sort of thing. But AJ rolled over again and reapplied the calf crusher in the center of the ring. And Jinder tapped out. And with that, mercifully, Jinder Mahal's run of main events is probably over. And we can move on with our lives. Um, I was really scared that they were going to put the title back on gender because I've learned that there's no idea too stupid for WWE to try. <laughs> uh, but yeah. no, it looks like that's that. And um, with um, Roman Reigns not expected to win the Royal Rumble and to challenge Brock Lesnar just based on the fact that uh, he and Brock are the only two to ever beat The Undertaker at WrestleMania... So it's going to be... So clearly the match is Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns with Undertaker, a special guest referee. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Undertaker, special guest ref? I would love that. I can't even, I can't even picture that, honestly. <laughs> he has to keep the hat. He has to wear the hat the whole time. Oh yeah, time. yeah. He'd just come out in a referee-striped trench coat <laughs> no, with yeah. his hat. <laughs> <laughs> and do the whole match in his entrance attire. It'd be perfect. Um, so yeah, uh, with that being said, it seems like my early my early pick now for the Royal Rumble win would be Shinsuke Nakamura. They have a lot of work to do with Shinsuke Nakamura in the six weeks before the Royal Rumble to make him seem like a legitimate threat to win it. But uh, that's the best match they can do on SmackDown right now is AJ versus Shinsuke. Uh, we saw it at Wrestle Kingdom, what was it, 10? Yeah, 
it was two years yeah. ago so Wrestle Kingdom 10 or 9 9 it was 9 and um it was good then so I'm sure it'll be good now and uh if they want to give the crowd something to be happy about because we all know that they're not going to be super thrilled about Roman Reigns winning his like what fourth straight Wrestlemania main event yeah mm. um that would be the one to do it. So uh, we'll see. And uh, that's the next uh, pay-per-view is Royal Rumble. Uh, so that's a long ways away. So in between then, we will have a retro pay-per-view review. And it will be... Excuse me. It will be Bash of the Beach, 1996. Birth of the NWO and all that shit. Um, it's our first WCW pay-per-view. Uh, and I teased that we were going to do a bad one. And there were no shortage of bad ones to, to pick. Pretty much anything Starcade 1997 and onward would be a fine choice for a terrible WCW pay-per-view. But uh, we decided to go with a historically significant one for now because as, as, much, as much as I enjoy laughing at bad wrestling, I don't know if I would enjoy sitting through three hours of bad wrestling to get some, some corny jokes. But we'll, we'll brave those waters another day. All right, so... Uh, that's going to wrap it up for this. We will have a dual NXT review. We'll review two weeks of NXT television later in the week. And uh, then we'll do Bash at the Beach sometime uh, next week. And then uh, Royal Rumble will be somewhere in there. At regular NXT reviews. There's stuff coming, I guess, is the best way to summarize that. So uh, we'll see you at the appropriate times. Bye-bye. Peace.